Yo, this is a question that's been popping up a lot on the comments on YouTube and I realized that a lot of people haven't been around long enough to for the last time that I went over my tattoos. So let's go over them, roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano The Third, y'all guys' third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you'd like to see at the end of the video, consider becoming part of the family, clicking the subscribe button bottom right hand corner. Now this video is normally not the type of video that I would do on the channel, but like I said, I've seen a lot of comments pop up, especially most recently when this one is like peeping out underneath my shirt and people have been like finally catching on, like, yo, this looks very similar to that painting right there. So let's just go over them in order. So that way the mystery is, is the mystery behind Ernest tattoos is no more. So tattoo number one, this one right here, this geometrical shape right here, this was the very first tattoo that I got. And this is actually a brother's tattoo. Me and my brother have the same one, same exact placement. Now to understand the meaning behind the tattoo and now to understand the meaning behind the tattoo, you have to understand the relationship between me and my brother. Me and my brother were both only children and we are stepbrothers. We have no linking blood relatives whatsoever. My dad married his mom when I was like a freshman or, or like a senior, but they started dating and moved in and when like a freshman. So that in itself is already unique enough. A single child family and then a single child family both coming together. So that way we're, we're two brothers, like that's very unique in of its own. But the other unique thing about our relationship is that we have a nine year difference in age. I am 31, he's 22 currently. So when, when I, I probably, whenever I met him, he was probably five and I was 14, six and I was 15 something like that like anyway there's a nine year difference and i consider that very unique and i consider that to be a pro in our relationship because we both rubbed off on one another in ways that other brothers or other sisters or blood relatives can't whenever you're like within the same one two three years of each other like we are literally in two complete different generations i am an i am like a, a picture perfect person of what a millennial would be and he is right at the cusp of when millennial turned into gen z so that generational gap and all the characteristics that go with that generation gap they they actually helped who we are and who we became once we became adults like when I was in high school and through college and he was barely young enough to like start being his own person you know like like getting into middle school getting into high school he saw me and my friends and how tight we were and and, uh, and you know we didn't we didn't go out we didn't cause trouble we didn't do any of the like we, we weren't bad I specifically and in turn my friends we were not bad role models for him and I always say that I feel like I had a pretty heavy hand in the person that he became because because he got to see me and go through all like the successes and failures and he saw me playing baseball nonstop and that was my focus in life when I was in high school and college like he saw all of these positive aspects as well as some of the failures the things that I did wrong what I used to get in trouble for those kind of things and you know that tattoos in his brain you know pun intended that tattoos in his brain when he's you know becoming his own and he's an adolescent but at the same time that nine-year generational gap works in the opposite direction as well like his generate he and his generation and his friends ha have rubbed off and had an impact on me like if you look at my core friends group and just people around my edge age in general I am way more tuned in I am way more honed in on what the new generation is about so him being nine years younger than me kept me in my like mindset in terms of like in terms of the way the world works it's very youthful but we decided to get a brother tattoo where we're gonna get in the same placement my brother was like I don't want to get anything that like I don't want to get something that's basic you know you design something and just keep in mind what I want and he wanted geometrical shapes he wanted he wanted symmetry and all that which is exactly why I came up with what I came up with so basically what it is is that's two pyramids one right here this is the base and then here it comes to the point the second pyramid is upside down the base is at the top coming down being supported by each other on two crossbars. So basically this is like a symbol of me and my brother supporting each other in terms of like, in terms of our brotherhood, but also being unified as one basically because because we have that type of relationship. So that's that tattoo. That was the very first one I got, never explained it because I had like 10 subscribers when I got it. Maybe not even that. Maybe the channel wasn't even around. Then next we go to this tattoo. This was the next one in order. And this one has a much, it has not a much deeper meaning, but it has a much more, it has a, stronger more jarring meaning as to how this came about so i put it on the channel back when it happened probably last november last december i probably got the tattoo in january ish of this year and i'll leave a link in like a card or something like that she like going to the video where i explained what happened to my brother so basically my brother was a collegiate athlete he played d3 basketball at the university of texas at dallas he, like you know they won 
won the conference championship when he was a junior. They, they were good. He was good. They were good. So going into his senior year, my parents and me, we were like, we got to go see every game possible. We were basically at every single game as much as we could be. And that was going to no, be, be no different going into his last year. So the opening tournament of the season, kind of like the preseason in basketball for NCAA, it was in it was in California. I don't quite remember the name of the school. I'll probably like I'll probably text it right here if I remember what it is. So I'm at work during the game and my dad normally texts me updates and he texts me like Curtis call me ASAP and I was like holy shit what happened he tore his ACL you know something happened where what I was thinking happened wasn't as bad as it actually was like it was serious basically my brother collapsed in the middle of the game and he had an episode of V-fib ventricular fibrillation I believe it's pronounced and basically what it is your heart pumps in two sequential manners with the with the electricity that runs on the outside of your heart pumping the muscle and basically what it is is like that electrical signal gets like caught up and your heart doesn't pump correctly it just like flutters it's not a strong enough pump to push blood so the blood basically doesn't move and he passed out and collapsed and ventri and v-fib surviving v-fib is like an eight percent chance like the statistical odds are completely against you 92 percent chance you're gonna die if you do not get the help that you need immediately and it, it just all happened to be that we were at the correct school that we had the correct training staff at the school that knew what to do and they brought out the defibrillator on the court and basically Basically shocked him and brought him back to life because he flatlined he was flatlined on the court before they got there so obviously I flew right out like I left work and went straight to the airport and flew to California so while we were in the hospital while he was in the hospital we were there for like seven eight days and uh, basically the electrocardiologist and the cardiologist they told us like he had an episode of v-fib one he's lucky we're here two he's lucky we're here without any brain damage because maybe like five ten more seconds of not of not having the resuscitation he could have survived but he could have had irreversible brain damage so the fact that he is here alive and the fact that he is the same exact person that he was before he collapsed like one percent chance that that was gonna happen and the cardiologist after you know after he ran the test and everything was like he's he's perfectly healthy he's, his resting beat a heartbeat is like 60 it's super low because he's obviously a collegiate athlete he's crazy in shape so this could have been an anomaly or it could happen again but either way we're gonna have to put him under we're gonna take him into surgery to implant an icd right here which is an internal basically an internal defibrillator so right now my brother has a has a defibrillator in his in his side that has leads that run right here and it's constantly 24 7 monitoring his heart rate and if, in, if anything gets out of rhythm if anything gets above like 300 280 beats per minute that's when you're having a dip that's when you're having a v-fib episode it'll automatically shock him it's like having cpr it's like having the the ambulance right there with you 24 7. so now that he's healed and he's able to work out again and what you know after after we've got over the emotion or not over but once we've accepted the emotional turmoil that came with it and that life was never going to be the same again for him or for us i decided to do this tattoo as a tribute and it is literally quite literally an anatomical heart it's like exactly an anatomical heart it's even the same size roughly around the same size of a fist which is normally the, the size of your heart and it has it has an electrical lead coming out with an electrical plug on the end because he's basically has now he has a computerized monitored heart 24 7 so i got this on me to represent that 24 7. And that was the last tattoo that I was planning on getting for quite some time. But then I do remember like when my channel was at like 20,000, I made a joke like, LOL, I'll, I'll, I'll do a tattoo once I get to 100,000. And then I completely forgot about it until we were approaching. And I was like, damn, I said that I was gonna do it. So I have to do it, but what am I gonna get? I was like, I'm not about to put the YouTube logo on me and be a walking billboard and have a very literal tattoo of, of the milestone on me. I wanna get something that commemorates this achievement that a lot of people, most people don't ever see. So. As I was thinking, I was like, damn, what could I do? And then I realized that like in the back of every single video in the old department, actually I just posted that Andy Minio video that like two videos ago. And the only thing that was on that wall as I was moving was that was the painting that I did. So let me explain to you why this one looks very similar to that. That was nothing more than just a, you know, something that I wanted to look cool in the back of my, in the back of my shots in the apartment. Just an eye and it has gold tears. And the concept behind it and the meaning behind it is quite literally literally like the tears that you shed from pain and the lessons that you learn from pain and sadness they're worth their weight in gold 
So that's literally, that's what that means. That's why the tears are gold. I think it's acrylic and then the rest is just like Sharpie or black paint and that's literally what that means. So I was like, damn, that is in the back of every single shot of every video that I've ever produced in this apartment. And I need to commemorate that because that was one of the cooler things that I had designed and I thought it like, that would be dope to put that on my body. So instead of just getting that straight up painting right here, that was too simple for me. I wanted to go like one step further and be like, how is this other than looking like that gonna commemorate what I did on the channel and how we got it to 100,000? Like I did it, I made the videos, but y'all guys also got it to 100,000. It would have been possible without y'all watching and subscribing. So I thought about the entire journey that I took from zero subscribers all the way to 100,000 and how many times I wanted to quit and how many times I got discouraged, you know, while I was putting videos out that weren't NF or Eminem related, they weren't getting as many views and, you know, the subscribers were dropping and people were passing me in terms of subscription. And, and I personally thought that I had better quality content than the people that were passing me. So I was getting frustrated. Like there was a time there where I didn't want to make a video for like six weeks. And I think I didn't make a video for like three. And then I like got, I got on my shit again. So I'm basically saying all that to say that it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows on the road to a hundred thousand. Like, like there was plenty of times that I wanted to quit and I had to force myself to keep going when I didn't want to. So this turned into this tattoo, which is basically that, but this now, because I was like, you know what? I turned this YouTube dream into complete reality. Like nothing but hard work, believing in myself, persevering through like all of the times when I wanted to quit. So this tattoo is quite literally that painting, but with a realistic eye because the blood and the tears and the sweat that I had for making this video turned my dream into a reality. So I decided to do a realistic eye because we are now in reality at 100,000. And that's basically it. There's obviously a lot of significance and I put a lot of thought into the tattoos that I get. And even if you don't put that much thought into them, I feel like tattoos are, are like cementing a moment in time for you and you can always go back. Like if I had to delete this channel or, or something like that, I could have always looked at this and said, yo, I did something that most people don't do. But yeah, that's basically the rundown. Those are the three tattoos that I have. If you have any questions or you have any kind of comments or you want to let me know what type of tattoos you have or what have you, feel free to drop all that in the comments down below. But I appreciate you guys listening this long because I know they can be long winded, but they're long winded because there's a lot of meaning behind every single tattoo that I have. And if I get more in the future, I'm sure those are going to be just as thought, just as conceptual as these three are. But that's it for this video, guys. I appreciate your time. I always plug the Patreon on the end. If y'all guys want to potentially become a Patreon subscriber, these are the type of videos that Patreon is going to see first. Not necessarily this one, because this is kind of give you a little a little taste of what you would get in Patreon, but this is the type of content behind the scenes, a little more personal that you would get on Patreon for your subscription, because you are quite literally keeping the channel alive by allowing me to do this full time and supporting my income. But other than Patreon, follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter at The Third Earnest, just like the channel. The links are down in the description below. So is the Patreon. Hit up the Discord. Also link down in the description below. We have a crazy community over there. We I'm in that Discord basically every day and if not every day it's rare that I skip discord for two days straight so if I'm not in there one day I'm in there the next but normally I'm in there seven days a week at least for an hour but that's it like I said I appreciate your time and like I always say at the very end of all of my videos go out there in the world love and care for one another love and care for each other and I catch everybody on the next video peace